Yeah, this is my first acoustic that I bought with my own money, and um, I went to the bank when I got a check from MCA. They sent us to the bank across the street. The cashier was handing us cash, and I asked her if she had $500 bills. <laughs> I was so retarded. I was just like, you know, a kid. And then I went to the, my local guitar shop. I was in like the, gla the glass case, like my whole childhood. And went, I want that guitar. <laughs> um, this is a butthole bass. See, so it's got butthole, butthole surfer. Um, you know, oh, dope. In honor of. Check it out. Um, I I just got that from Dakota. The the tiki bird. That thing's fucking bad. That's that's at Ramstead. Ram what? Ram Ramstein. <laughs> and uh, this is like one of my favorites. Uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Capallo that makes us my, my like the blue one. This I've been waiting for a year and a half for. And there's a good story behind this. You, you guys uh, are you guys familiar with Metalachi? I mean, no, uh, Metalocalypse, uh, you know, me uh, me Metalocalypse. Well, uh, the bass player, uh, Murderface, right? The guy that plays Murderface. He got his, his entire guitar collection stolen. And the reason how we found that out, Dakota was found a Thunderbird bass. It's a Michael Lawl Thunderbird, because uh, Gibson doesn't make active preamp basses. And he knew I'd love this thing. But it was a four string one. and. Um, he bought it, so I had it for one night, and the next day he called Mike Lawl for like a volume knob or something. And the guy goes, "Does it have a scratch here and there?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Dude, that's just stolen." <laughs> so, so we gave it back to Murderface, and then I ordered the bass straight from Mike Lawl, uh, but a five-string version of it. And I, I just played the first show the other night. How did it sound? It sounded oh, good. Right on. Yeah, I love it. It plays fucking killer. Dude. Yeah. It plays killer, sounds killer, looks killer. I, I just so happened we got that one recently, the Sandberg. Oh yeah, that Jeremy. one. Yeah. That's, you know, is that one old or new? Like, it no, looks like it, it a... just got dragged behind a truck. Yeah, and it's a cylinder. Like I've been playing his, his basses forever. He's he, like this guy, cylinder, and Kapala. Those two guys have make every bass they ever made. In, in store, but just in shop, everything, you know? I, all the best all-time bass that I've ever played was the uh, Pig Champion, I call it, and, and it's a pink version of the cylinder here. I thought I had the white cylinder here. Oh, dude, this is um, Deftones, I love Deftones, fucking, it's a signature model of his, and it's a seven string, so it's kind of weird to play leads, but you just bar everything else, and it's, and it's a low B, you know? Fucking, uh, this guitar I got for 800 bucks years ago, and it, it turned out to be worth way more than I thought because it's a it's a heritage standard, which means like the 80 year old people during the war, the old ladies made that guitar when in their older years with with a, an old stock of wood that they found when they were switching factories from uh, like uh, where's the place from you know the Gibson factories like when in the 80s they switched locations and they found a bunch of old wood so they brought these old ladies right before they were gonna die and make have them make these guitars and heritage and fucking like cool guitar. Guitar. This one here is uh, I forget what kind of it is, but it's a, it's a Saint Blues and, and it's like kind of a Frankenstein, you know, like a Tally Gibson uh, Gibson Tally sort of creation. But very likable, needs strings. I don't remember where I got the Gibson but I love it. And, the uh, Tally uh, Custom Shop Shreds. Oh, this bass here is, um, is a uh, is um, uh, it's a Renaissance, but I'm trying to think the, na the name of the guy that made this bass. He used to work for Olympic, and um, I have another bass of his. Rick Walters? No, not Rick Walters. Rest in peace. Rick Walters. I was Rick something, but um, th that's like one of the first active electronic basses made. And, you can tell because the picks, the pickups die really quick. This Steinberger, I used to play this in the Dub All Stars years ago. It's so awesome! I, back in the day, I put it. I have a case that looks like a gun case and carry it on the plane. You know, it's kind of cool. But yeah, this is pretty much my guitars, and there's a bunch of acoustics. And, oh man, uh, it's all about the basses to me. For me, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's my short story of all my guitars.
Thank you.